Finally in this chapter I'd like to discuss with you a dangerous security loophole that exists in Unix. Unix's security system is rather primitive, dating back to the 70s. Modern operating systems such as Windows 2000 offer a far more flexible approach to security with fewer loopholes. The loophole is only, it only exists because people are not fully conversant with file and directory permissions. Consider the following permissions. I've got a directory called dir1 and it has full permission. And inside dir1 I have a file called file1 which is read only. Nobody can modify that file. Or can they? I assert to you that it is possible to modify that file. Can you think how I might do it? Now I know that you look at the permissions and you say, well, nobody can modify that file. And just to make it harder, I will assume that I am not the owner of either the file or the directory. And yet, I can still modify the file. How? Can you think about it? You want to take a second, pause the video and maybe think about how you might do it? Okay, this is how you can do it, if you like. Firstly, copy the file to another name, so create a second file. Then, modify that second file in any way you like. Perform any of the modifications that you wish to make on file 1, make them on file 2. It's possible to do that because you will be the owner of file 2. So if you don't have write permission on file 2, then you can give yourself write permission on file 2 quite easily and then you can modify the file. Then, remove file 1. That's where the, the clever bit is. You can remove file 1. Why? Because the directory that it's sitting in is writable. And it's writable by everybody which means that anyone can come in here and add files or remove files. And of course that means they can remove file 1. Now, once file 1 has been removed, you can move file 2 into where file 1 used to be. In other words, you can give file 2 the same name as file 1, so to, to make it look like the original file. Remember, this is a modified version of file 1. Now, of course, file 1 will now be owned by you and will probably have different set of permissions and so on. But because you're the owner it's quite easy to adjust all those things. You can change the ownership and the permissions etc to make file 2 look exactly like the original file 1 looked. The only thing that might give away the fact that it's been tampered with has, will be that its last modified date and time will have been updated. And it will be very very difficult to tell that it is in fact a different file. It is possible to tell, but very difficult. If you're interested, the only way that you can tell will be that file, the new one, will have a different inode number to the last one. Now, you don't know what an inode number is, but you will later on in the course, and even if, even if you do know what an inode number is, chances are you don't know what the inode number of that particular file is. So no one will ever really know that that file was modified. Anyway, what's the moral of this story? pay attention to your directory permissions. People always look at the permissions on their files and they see that it's readable by everyone and writable by no one so they feel that it is then not possible to modify the file. Completely ignoring of course the fact that the directory is fully writable. This happens quite a lot. I don't think it's taken advantage of quite a lot which is just luck I guess. Anyway, you're aware now, I showed you this technique not so that you could go off and do your own hacking, but so that you could clamp down on the permissions on your own system. Anyway, that's the end of the chapter on security. Let's move on.